Good morning and welcome once again to our nine o'clock online service. Now I need to tell you that uh, I've invested in a new camera, one that can actually see you as I'm talking. Mm, so, so as I look around, what can I see? I can see a number of you still in your dressing gowns having breakfast. Mm. And I can also see our friends Alan and Lorraine Wheeler who live as far away as Geelong and they're not in their dressing gowns. Also, Alan and Lorraine, you'll be pleased to know that the begonia cuttings you gave us last year are actually growing. There they are. We're looking forward to when they're as big as yours. Anyway, I was only joking about the camera. I can't really see you, so you can relax. Our communion focus this morning is entitled, My Help Comes From The Lord. Now some of you will think, well that's actually a quote from Psalm 121 verse 2, and you'd be right. Actually, I'm going to use this psalm towards the end of my comments this morning, but our chosen Bible readings today are Lamentations chapter 5 verse 19, and also Psalm 54 and Psalm 79, because these two psalms in particular capture the feelings of those who are in deep trouble crying out to the Lord for help, which I suppose is a bit like the mood of the author of Lamentations, as well as, of course, the feelings that we have ourselves today during this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, as we discovered over recent weeks, the book of Lamentations records a sad era in Israel's history, for it graphically describes the immense suffering of the people with the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC and the exile to Babylon of many of its citizens. Yes, they had been unfaithful to the covenant that God had made with them at Mount Sinai and yes, God's righteous judgment for their apostasy was therefore self-inflicted. But God had used Babylon as a human agent of his wrath. But as the Book of Lamentations draws to a close, there is just a small glimmer of hope. For in the second last verse, or the, one of the last verses in uh, chapter 5 and verse 19, there is a fresh awareness of God's sovereignty and a realisation that deliverance can only come from Him, the one they had forsaken. And so we read in verse 19 of chapter 5, You, O Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. It's a bit sad that of the 22 verses in chapter 5, this verse, verse 19, is the only one of praise. The other 21 continue the theme of woe and desolation. But at least there is this recognition now of God's majesty and his throne being the symbol of his kingly rule and because he reigns and reigns forever his love and his mercy to those to look to him for salvation will never fail 
Psalm 54 is a short, a short psalm recording a time when David was in great danger. It begins with David pleading, Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. Strangers are attacking me. Ruthless men seek my life. Men without regard for God. Then, right in the middle of the psalm, in verse 4, David declares, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Here is an expression of total confidence that God will vindicate David and deliver him from those who sought to kill him. For there is great power, power in the name of God, and this David knew, but his enemies did not. Then in Psalm 79 and verse 9 we read, Help us, O God our Saviour, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. We hear the cries then of the exiles, for this psalm was written at that time. The cries of the exiles groaning as prisoners, highlighting their lamentable state, yet appealing to their merciful God for forgiveness and for deliverance. The psalm ends on a positive note, as the people discover that God is faithful to those who repent and who turn to him. It says, then your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever from generation to generation. We will recount your praise. Which leads me now to Psalm 121 and the first three verses. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Now, whilst this psalm was originally sung by pilgrims travelling to Jerusalem and to the elevated temple there, the help that is offered is not confined to just one nation, for it is for all people, all people who turn to the Lord for strength in times of difficulty. And how important this is today. The situation in our communities, and indeed in our city, as we are facing this pandemic, how we all need God's help and his wisdom, how we need his strength to persevere, and how we need his salvation, which is freely offered to all those who repent and turn to him and accept what he has given through his Son, the Lord Jesus, the one that we have come to remember this morning, for he became our sin-bearer and our Saviour, and who continues to be an ever-present help in trouble, as it says in Psalm 46. So let us continue to praise his mighty name, and let us lift our eyes to the hills. Now, I don't mean the Dandenongs up there, but to the one who never slumbers and who always is ready to give us his help. So until next week, be strong and goodbye.
Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is wonderful again that we can gather together online to worship our God. Um, today, the theme is My Help Come from the Lord. It is a very relevant topic, especially in this pandemic time. Every day when we hear the news from the government, from the America, sometimes it makes me wonder, where is God in all this situation? How come God has not come to help us all? And I was just pondering, I was just pondering on the book of Lamentation, chapter 5, verse 19. Um, it talks about, You, Lord, range forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. It is such a, such a great reminder for me that our God range forever. And uh, no matter what situation we are in now, He is always in control. We just have to have faith in Him and knowing that He has the best for our future. Just like when um, when Jesus is all beaten up and hung on that cross, you know the governor, the, the priest, the Pharisee, even the disciple thought this could be the end of Jesus' life, and uh, this is the end of the rumors about Jesus becoming the savior, becoming king. But what we do not know is that actually God, actually Jesus, has indeed accomplished the greatest task for all human race and that is our eternal salvation so i don't know what we are what we are what you are going through right now either struggling through financially emotionally or physically but one thing we have hope is that we know that our god uh, he is not just a king that sits on the throne do nothing he um he really cares for us individually and uh, we all know that when we ask for help, when we pray to Him, He will always answer our prayer. And uh, it is, it, you know, life would be so much better if if I know Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister, personally, and, and He will answer my call, He will answer my help anytime I call Him. Isn't it great we have God who is way bigger than our Prime Minister? And our God is the creator of the whole universe. And uh, he's, he's, he's God and He can... He can make everything possible. And all we have to do is to rely on Him, to have faith on Him, and uh, to trust Him that He has best for us in future. And uh, with that thoughts, let's have our communion. And I would like to introduce a song that really helped me uh, in preparing my heart for communion. It is called, it's a song called Come Share the Lord. And we're very grateful that the Laos can play for us this morning, uh, these beautiful songs. While we listen to the beautiful music, uh, please focus on the word too. It's a very meaningful word. Um, I hope you guys enjoy.
Let's pray before we take this bread and cup. Heavenly Father, indeed you are a gracious host, that you prepare the bread for us, you prepare the cup for us, and thank you for inviting us um, to your family to enjoy this blessing. And uh, when we take this cup and bread, we take it with a grateful heart, and uh, knowing that what Jesus has done on that cross for us all. We again thank you for your love and the salvation. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Throughout our study of Lamentations, we've been um, returning again and again to that verse in chapter 3, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And we hold on to that, don't we? We hold on to the fact that God is unshaken. He is steadfast. He is sure. He is our rock. The end of Lamentations reminds us that we may have a God who is unshaken, but we do not have a God who is unmoved. The writer of Lamentations appeals to his God. He says at the end there, Restore us to thee, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless thou hast utterly rejected us and art exceedingly angry with us. And Daniel reminded us a few weeks ago that the, the, the hope of Lamentations is the very fact that it is written at all. The writer of Lamentations knows that he is speaking to a God who listens and who responds and who is moved by the pleas of his people. We know that because we look at Jesus' life and we see when he had compassion on the crowds, when his heart was moved by the widow whose son had died, when he wept uh, when his friend had passed away. And Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. So he never misrepresented God. God is unshaken, but he is never unmoved. And we have a God who listens and uh, responds and is moved by your plight and mine. We're going to move on next week to Ezra, the book of Ezra, and uh, I'd recommend you read chapter 1 in preparation for that. Um, Ezra picks up the story uh, with the return of some of the exiles to a desolate uh, city where they must begin again rebuilding both the walls and the temple. Something that the writer here of Lamentations writes at the end of this chapter is um, extremely challenging and insightful into their situation. 
Verse 15 of chapter 5, have a look with me. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. He knows that this is a God who has responded with um, justice and righteousness and that it has been their sin that has landed them in this situation. Because of this, our heart is faint. Because of these things, our eyes are dim. Because of Mount Zion, which lies desolate, and foxes prowl in it. And so the writer of Lamentations looks to Mount Zion, the mountain of God, where God dwells amongst his people, and he says it's desolate. God is not there. And who are we if God is not amongst us? Moses said that once, didn't he, to God? He says, don't leave us. We're nobody without you. And Jeremiah is saying the same thing. Because Mount Zion lies desolate, that's why my heart is faint and my eyes are dim. And so as we go next week into the next part in, in this story of the history of Israel and and we look at what happens when they return and when they rebuild the altar and, and then the temple and the walls. Uh, what will God do? And we have prophecies from Isaiah and Jeremiah and, and some of the other prophets running through our heads, promises of a return of God to his people and a blessing uh, on his people and through his people to the rest of the world. And when we read Ezra, we're going to have mixed uh, uh, emotions, I think. There's a real sense of a now and a not yet in that book. So does God answer this prayer? Does he utterly reject his people? Does he remain angry with them? What's his plan? What is he going to do with Mount Zion, which lies desolate? How is he going to return to his people? How is he going to continue the plan that he had right from the beginning in Genesis to dwell uh, with us and amongst us? Well, let's explore that question over the next few weeks, shall we?
Well, good morning. I hope Ian can't see me in my pyjamas with that new camera of his. But I have combed my hair, just like Judith does every Sunday morning. Well, this is online service number 19. Uh, Colin's taking a break this week, a well-earned break. And I want to just thank uh, Colin and all those who have participated in our 9am service for the last 19 weeks. We often get over 300 people viewing the service, a few more than we would normally get of a Sunday morning. And we've got um, some really good feedback from people on how um, uplifting they find the service. So thanks all that have been uh, involved in it. My first notice is to Geoffrey. Now, Geoffrey, you did a fantastic job last week at memorising Psalm 23. My problem now is, Geoffrey, that I've got to go and memorise it too. It's going to take me a little time, uh, possibly about 12 months. So I'll come back to you as soon as I've memorised it. The Refresh Women's Online Conference is on the 15th of August. That's two weeks' time. The special guest for that conference is Sally Minette, that lady that plays the piano. Uh, the topic is At Home With God. Uh, to register, you use the link below here, and you need to pre-register to have access to that content on the 15th of August. The new preaching series on Ezra starts next week and you can go to the church website if you want to do a pre-swat up on uh, Ezra before that preaching series starts. Uh, the church's online financial report can be found via this uh, web link below. It's a great view. I've had a look and Paul's done a fantastic job as he normally does in presenting that report. Congratulations to Rita on her new grandson Jake. And I believe that uh, Grandma and Grandson have spent a little bit of time together. Congratulations, Rita. Uh, Graham Martin is just about finished the Suki New Testament rewrite. And so please be praying for him as he completes that um, over the coming weeks. Now for my favourite part of the 9am service, our time of prayer. And Amelia is going to lead us in prayer this morning. Thank you, Amelia. Hi, everyone. Let's pray together. Lord God, we worship you today. We thank you for your grace and your care for us over this past week. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your protection. And we thank you for your presence as you go with us through every day. Lord, we want to pray especially for those who are suffering. We pray for those amongst us who are undergoing cancer treatment. We think of Sue and Emmanuel and Glenda and their families. Lord, we pray that you would sustain them as they go through cancer treatment. Lord, we also want to pray for those who are battling mental illness at this time. We pray that although it's an invisible battle, that you would strengthen them, that your presence would be close and real to them. And Lord, we think of those in our community and around the world who are feeling incredibly isolated as a result of um, this virus and the effect that it's had on our world. We pray that it would be a catalyst to many people turning to you and discovering um, the reality of Jesus Christ and the reality of heaven. Lord, we wanna pray for those who are in aged care homes um, at what must be quite a scary time, as well as quite an isolating time as they're unable to have visitors and family. Lord, we want to um, pray for Don and Graham, for Maureen, Gordon, and David and Rachel Lau's grandparents. We pray for Margaret and for Dorothy as well. Lord, we pray for those who are caring for them, that you would give them um, the grace and the, the compassion to do their job well in caring for others. And Lord, we pray for the staff in our healthcare sector as well. We pray for doctors and nurses and paramedics, especially those who are on the front lines of dealing with the virus patients. Lord, we pray for leaders and all levels of government um, and the leaders of the church as well, that they would be blessed with incredible wisdom and discernment in knowing how to make decisions for the good of those over whom they have influence. Lord, we pray um, for the grief that is in our community at this point in time, for those who are feeling loss, whether that's loss of income, loss of job, loss of security and certainty, or the sense of those things loss of family members, and we think of those in our, um, our group as well who have lost family members. 
We pray that you would comfort them and that you would bless them with your peace. Lord, we pray for those who are experiencing um, financial stress, the loss of their business or jobs, um, and we think of Peter Ting as well. We pray that you would enable them to trust you um, and to experience your peace in such a difficult time. Lord, we pray for children who find themselves at home instead of at school. Pray that you would help them to focus on their learning and to enjoy this time with their family. We pray that you would bless their parents um, with grace and with patience. And we pray that this would be a time um, that all of us will certainly remember, but that we would remember the incredible grace that you show to us and that you enable us to show to each other. Lord, we pray um, for those who are facing death at this time. We pray that uh, many would be inspired to turn to you. And Lord, we ask you for opportunities to be able to share the good news and the hope of Jesus Christ in this time, that we would not be um, we would not be shy, we would not be hesitant, but we would be bold and courageous in sharing the riches that we have in Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray that as we head into this new week, that we would be reminded afresh of the wonderful pearl of great price that you are, the treasure that you are above all other things, and that we would be inspired to seek you this week in a new way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.